All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. Today, we're going to be going over a product for any of you guys that have a 3D printer. Uh, maybe you've had a 3D printer. You've had it for a while. When you first got it, everything was going well, but lately, it seems like you just can't get proper bed adhesion or you're seeing lines in your 3D prints. Well, there's a very simple fix that could be the problem, and I had to approach this issue here in my shop myself, and so I'm just going to pass on to you something that I have learned about 3D printing, and it's going to make your life a lot easier. So stick around, and we're going to get to it. All right, guys, so this is it. This is the big secret, and it's not really a secret, but it is one of those things that I can vouch for uh, some of the other folks out there. Uh, Sam over at Samcraft, he recently did a video about how moisture was affecting uh, his filament for 3D prints and how he, you know, come up with a solution that works for him. Well, my situation is a little different. I don't lean heavily into 3D printing, but I do a decent amount. I use it mostly to make parts and things for the, the CNC, the lasers and stuff like that. Adapters for hoses, lens covers. I'm not really cranking out bulk items, so I don't have a need for anything too large. So I looked around and I decided to go with this machine. It's the Creality Space PI uh, filament dryer, dryer. And this is it sitting right here, guys. And a lot of you are gonna ask, how loud is it? Well, it's running right now. It's about two hours into a drying cycle on a couple of rolls. And I don't know if you can hear it, but I'll be quiet and we'll see if we can hear it. All right, so there's a little bit of a hum. Literally, it's about the same as your average PC. Uh, the fans that are in it are similar to like a, a computer or PC. And it's got a couple of fans in there. It does heat up. Right now, uh, it's at 50 degrees Celsius, 34% relative humidity. I'll let those things, I usually do them in a few cycles because I'm not going through that many rolls. But what I'll do is I'll like dry them a little bit. I've dried these for the past two days for a couple of hours here and there. Uh, I also have some of the uh, silica that comes with everything you buy these days. And I put it in the dryer also with the filament as I put it in there. Uh, and that allows me to not only dry the filament, but I'm also drying out my little silica beads and reusing those guys. And so once I get it dry, I put it in a Ziploc, drop those little pack of silica beads in there with it, and that keeps it uh, dry enough that we don't have a problem with 3D printing. Guys, I had tried to print some new clamps for my CNC. I've printed those on my A1 plenty of times. Uh, and I used the same file that I had used the last successful batch of clamps that I printed. I couldn't get it, couldn't get it bed adhesion right. I tried using glue, had lines, you know, the, the engrave was getting stringy. It was just a mess. Uh, so that's when I said, you know what, I'm not printing anything else until I can dry my filament because I, what I had started doing in the past was I just open a new roll and then take the other roll and stick it in a bag and set it off to the side. Well, you end up with a whole bunch of half rolls sitting around if you do that. So after I bought the dryer, I ran that same file that I had ran with the wet filament that I suspected was wet. And check this out, guys. Look, I mean, there's no... You, you, now, I did set this on the stock uh, Bamboo Labs uh, setting for strength because I wanted these to be strong. But there's no lines visible. Like, I mean, it is. there's one little string right there coming off of it. But these things are solid. The corners are nice and sharp. Everything about this print is the way that it needed to be. Uh, and that's the only thing that changed. I used the same file that was sliced already, saved to my A1. The only thing that was changed was the filament was wet. It's the same roll. It was wet the last time I tried it. I had dried it the second time. So that's the only thing that changed out of the whole setup was the filament was ran for I think I ran it for three hours in this guy. So there you have it. If you're having those problems with bed adhesion, string in, it's just you just can't get it going. The the bamboo labs, I will say, if nothing else, they are fire and forget. I mean you can literally send your file and, and I've had good luck with all my prints turning out good. This little escapade that I went through with the moisture is the only time I've had any issues. And since putting the dryer into effect and coming up with my own little drying regimen, it's, uh, it's working just fine. I'm gonna unplug this guy and bring it over here 
and just show it to you. It's very simple. Uh, it uses a standard little 120 plug, uh, similar to most electronics nowadays. Nothing fancy about it. Uh, on the back right here, that's where the power plugs in. You've got a little switch here. Uh, the front, it's got a little display up here with some touch buttons that you can't see with it powered off. <laughs> but inside, guys, it's very simple. Uh, you can see I got my little my little silica pack back there in the back, and I got a couple in the front. Uh, it's got a little, like I said, there's a little hole right there that you can set them in, and it works out just fine. And so this is the black and white rolls. I'm going to show you how I am going about using this. There's other ways uh, you can you can use the uh, vacuum sealer and vacuum seal these things. I'm just using the big one gallon, uh, great value from Walmart, uh, Ziploc bags or zip bags, I guess you could say. But it's almost as if they made these rolls to fit perfectly in one of these bags. It fits perfectly. And so then I just put that in there. I'm gonna take a little pack of my, my silica that was in there drying as well. I'm gonna throw it in there with this thing. I'm gonna try to get as much of the air out of there as I can and zip that up. And there we go. And that's how that's how I've started storing the filament now. Uh, because once you open it from stock, from factory, uh, you pretty much, the plastic that it comes in, it's not reusable. Uh, it would be a nice addition if they did start using reusable, sealable bags. That would be an awesome upgrade if anybody that makes filaments watching. Maybe we can start doing that, bamboo. Uh, but yeah, so I got this little roll of black right here, same thing, just gonna stick it in there. And once I get it in there, drop my little pack of silica beads off in there with it and zip it up. And you can buy, if you don't have these little beads, you can buy those things on Amazon and places like that. Uh, there are countless different ways that you can get them. I'm just recycling ones that come with the filament or that come with machines. Rather than throwing them away, I'm just reusing them. And eventually, I'm assuming the bags will probably go bad on me. But until then, uh, I do very similar uh, to a safe that I have in the house. I've got this big metal can that's full of these beads, and you actually can put the thing in the oven and heat it up, and it'll dry it out, and you can recycle it. So that's kind of where I got the idea of recycling these beads. And if you really want to use this thing, like I said, I'm not sure exactly why uh, Bamboo doesn't sell their own uh, filament dryer, it'd be kind of a welcomed addition, uh, especially for the A1 and the A1 Mini. But this guy also has two holes up in the top right here, and it comes with the tubes, so you can actually set this up to feed directly from this dryer and just leave your filament inside here. Uh, it does have, and now that I got the filament out here, I can show you the inside a little better. It does have rollers, there's my little desiccant, but it does have these rollers in here that allow the rolls of filament to just kind of rotate on these little these little metal pins in there and uh, so you can you can use it that way as well uh, if you look back here back here in the back you've got these two little holes there if you look they've already got some silica in there uh, it stays pretty much in there i don't take those out uh, but what that serves the purpose of is when you have this closed and it's powered off, that allows uh, the moisture that is left in this box, if there is any in there or gets in there, you know, through the cracks or whatnot, it pulls it into those beads. And then when you fire it up to dry it the next time, it dries that silica out. Uh, but I've also contributed my own little two packs that stay in here as well. So just a little over protection. I guess you could say. But so far, guys, it's worked really well. For the price, I don't know that you could beat it. There's other ones out there, but the reason I decided to go with Creality is one, we all know that Creality has a very long established reputation in the 3D printer laser engraving community. And so I felt like if their product was out there, it would probably be a good product, especially seeing how the closest competitors, in my opinion, uh, to the Bamboo Labs machines are from Creality. So got theirs but that's the reasoning behind it before you ask uh, basically is this is nothing more than a little heating element some fans and desiccant that's it in a, in a plastic box nothing too complex there are other brands out there that I decided to go with Creality so 
there you go. All right, guys. So this little screen is kind of hard to see with these cameras. It's got a bit of a glare. Uh, power button is going to be down here. Uh, it takes a couple of seconds pressure to get it to come on and off. Uh, you'll see we got the temperature, uh, relative humidity inside the enclosure, material setting right here. I've got it set to PLA, and then you got the timer. You can hit the power or the menu button, the little gear wheel right here, and it'll change from all these different things. Uh, so that's what, and I'm just running stock settings. I've got it set to material, uh, to PLA, and I'll come down here and just add hours to it there. And that's how you set the timer for it to dry. It's pretty easy to operate. Like I said, I'm not getting into all of the little settings and all the menus because it's kind of hard to see. But you get the general idea. Everything is set from here. Uh, it does have settings for all the main materials. You got PLA, uh, TPU, I'm assuming, PP, whatever that is, ABS, ASA, PETG, uh, and PC, PA, PET, PLACF, PETC, PETG, CF, PACF, and PLA, of course. So there you go. All the majors are in there, and then you just hold the button for a couple seconds, powers it off. All right, guys, so there you have it. Uh, all in all, so far, I am very pleased with the machine. Uh, the effect it's having on the prints is definitely a plus uh, for the cost of the, the, the purchase. It's not that bad. Uh, but this little guy gives you the ability to dry two rolls of filament at the same time, and it really only takes up a 12 by 12 by 12 area. You could technically get by with like a 12 by 8 as far as the width goes, but let's just say to be able to get in and out of there, you're going to need at least a cubic foot of space for this machine. But as light as it is and easy as it is to uh, move around, I can see it being one of those things that you could actually get it out, use it, and store it when you're not using it, like in the top of a closet or something like that. The thing weighs like maybe five pounds, so not really bulky. Uh, and so far, it's doing a really good job of uh, thoughtful design, being able to hinge that whole top back and get in there. Works really well. And it's from Creality, so you know they know what they're doing when it comes to 3D printers. But uh, I'll drop links down below, guys, if you're interested. Go check that out. Uh, I think anybody that's doing 3D printing, you definitely need to have this option after, after what I've seen with my prints. Humidity gets into everything. Uh, no matter what it is, if you set it into an environment, the humidity inside that material is going to try to uh, equal out to the humidity in the room. So over a period of time, your, your filament is going to draw in moisture, especially in those you know more humid environments. Uh, here in Alabama, it is a must. You got to have it. So, so far, so good. I'll keep you posted. But uh, check that link down below if you want one. And until next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.